junior doctor in NHS, so I'm in my second year of training. And I'm part of this new kind of clinical entrepreneurship scheme for training doctors to be kind of in digital health, technology, as well as kind of innovation. So it's good that like, good sleep, as uh, Dr. Hart told us earlier, it's good for creativity and innovation. That's something I enjoy. So I do like getting my sleep, probably my favorite thing in the day. <laughs> get. <laughs> uh, get a lot of it. So um, I got involved with a startup called O Waves. So O Waves is basically a concept which is around circadian rhythms in lifestyle medicine. Um, and the kind of aim of the startup is to help students deal with mental health issues through lifestyle change. So this slide first uh, points out kind of how in colleges, how mental health is becoming such a massive problem with anxiety and depression, especially in the States, but I'm sure it's in the UK as well. So these are some stats which kind of bring that home, that there's a lot of problems with students kind of dropping out of university just because of anxiety, depression. So obviously there's a range of factors. Social media was mentioned earlier, but um, having a good balance in your life, so sleep being quite key uh, to your mental health was something that was highlighted. Um, so this startup is based in San Diego, California. So um, lifestyle medicine hasn't really hit the UK yet. It's quite new. In the last year, the British Society was set up. So I wish when I was in medical school, I got no training in sleep, nothing on nutrition, nothing on exercise, nothing on stress. So, I mean, that's something I was interested in because I'm quite into health and fitness. But um, I went to medical school hoping that I'd get some teaching, but I didn't get any. So before starting F1, um, the, American, the British Society of Lifestyle Medicine formed. Uh, and I was in innovation and lifestyle medicine where they both meet. So, um, so the problem with lifestyle is our biggest limiting factor today that was referred to earlier in that talk, um, time. So time is our limiting factor for eating well, <laughs> sleeping well, uh, exercising, and, and that's a common denominator. denominator. So um, a lot of um, um, public uh, media has highlighted that time scarcity, time stress are some of the points of which is causing this sleep epidemic. So what is lifestyle medicine? So it combines of exercise, nutrition, sleep, stress management, as well as socializing and social relationships. And I would say sleep is probably the most important out of the five. So I'm glad I could get a talk from a specialist in sleep because I've never really met one before. I wish you were at my medical school. <laughs> so that's good. Um, so skin rhythms. So skin rhythms and Nobel Prize is one. So it's quite interesting because it's something I was unaware of during medical school. Obviously it causes all peaks in the morning, gets you ready to be alert, ready for the day, and at night uh, melatonin helps you to fall asleep. And as we mentioned, your blood pressure's gone down, whole body temperature drops. So at different parts of the day, we're actually primed for different activities. So we're actually more alert at certain times of the day. We're more likely, good strength training is better at certain times of the day. Um, so that plot basically shows that different parts are peaking. So obviously there will be normal distribution curves, so it's not specific to everyone, it will vary. Um, and scientists dispute how, by how much we, we vary with our chromosomes. Okay, so here comes O waves. So O waves, basically it's a calendar, it's a holistic calendar where you can plan your days. So I'm sure a lot of you use Google calendars, you're busy at university, you have meetings, you have a lot of events. So um, Always set out to make a calendar with a good UX design so people can easily drag and drop their activities. So you've got your kind of solar sleep wake cycle when you know the sun comes up or when it goes down, and then your activities. So we, we're using the five factors, so you know, in a week how many hours you're spending yourself. So you're kind of, you can kind of track that. And always is also working with the Apple Watch, so it gives you a reminder when it's time to exercise, it's time to come to a lecture, <laughs> um, etc. Um, so we're only on iOS at the moment, so iPad and iPhone. So recently in the Apple release, they actually copied some of our designs. Um, so, because, because um, so the CEO of the company, uh, we were working with Apple, uh, sent some of our designs over, and um, they came out with their new clock face, but still it's not integrated. So they actually only use it, actually working on sleep at the moment in the laboratory, because that's one thing Apple doesn't do well at the moment. So Fitbit, I have a Fitbit, I use that for sleep tracking. I've just recently bought the Aura Ring, which is quite good from Silicon Valley. Um, I track my deep sleep, my heart rate variability. Um, it's quite good for me to kind of work out, okay, how stressed I am, how to balance my sleep with training in the gym, you know, if I've got busy, you know, shit coming out of the hospital, so it can help you out. So um, we've got the three sectors. We've got the solar clock, the traditional clock, and 
my body clock. And then for behavior change, what we've seen is um, the fog behavioral model. So you need intrinsic, extrinsic motivational factors, but you also need the ability to be able to, for that to happen, so you need to barrier the limitations that you have in your life. And then you need a trigger. When all three things come together, that's when you act and you know, adopt healthy behavior. So our calendar, we've, we've got a lot of experts on our panel. Um, Liana Liano, who's from the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, so she's on our expert panel, and we've got a lot of Olympia, Olympians and athletes, who are normally people who are prioritizing their sleep. Um, LeBron James sleeps 11 hours mm. in a day, because uh, he has to perform at you know, NBA basketball. So it's a lot riding on that. So we've mapped, mapped Olympians, physicians, entrepreneurs, innovators, a broad spectrum of kind of high-performing individuals to see what time they wake up, what time they sleep, when do they exercise, and then we're trying to integrate expert advice into the calendar. So at the moment, we've got 350,000 downloads that we're being used across the world. Um, so far, we're still on our basic version. We want to be trying to use artificial intelligence in the future and moving forward with that. Um, there's a few things I can't mention here. <laughs> IP and patient pending, uh, but I would love to. Um, so we've had a Paralympian who's, who's Matt Tisdale, and he's retweeted and kind of what's his, when he sleeps, when he wakes up, um, and this whole kind of program. So that's hopefully the students, um, they're quite normally inspired by such individuals because you watch them on TV, um, and they probably have more of an effect than someone like me who's talking to you uh, because um, they're entertaining. So, um, yeah, so the app is now available on iOS, so we're just kind of using it. It's a free app to use. Um, you plan your calendar, your friends can plan their calendars. You can, it's integrated with Google Calendar, so your events sync into that as well. Outlook is now integrated with it as well. So um, recently, we've also launched the Body Clock podcast on iTunes. So it's myself, Reagan, who's a preventive medicine physician and lifestyle medicine physician in Denver, America. So Ryan, who's a CEO, so he's an MD and MBA. And um, so the four of us, discuss, we have different guests on, so I hope you'll be featuring if, uh, okay. because we try and get the experts from kind of nutrition, exercise, sleep. Um, we've got a Harvard Business School, we'll get a study on happiness coming on soon, which I'm excited about. <laughs> so, yeah, please have a listen and leave a re review for the podcast as well. Um, you might enjoy it. So we've had, there's actually one of my friends, a nutritionist, he's doing his PhD in chrono nutrition. So this week they're kind of putting a few volunteers in labs and using red light, working out fat versus mm -hmm. carb meals at different times, how to train their circadian rhythms. Um, so it's an interesting podcast with a lot of different content. Um, with a way we've signed a recent um, deal with a research institution as well to prove that if you're planning your life, behavior change that can improve mental health for students. So we're doing that at UC San Diego University at the moment. Um, so Royal said to me that if anyone wants to sign up for beta trial, you get free coaching for 90 days mm -hmm. on a bi-monthly basis. So it'll just be a check-in online where people will we'll have Olympians, nutritionists, dietitians, uh, personal trainers who can help you kind of with your busy student schedule uh, program that in and see the changes for your kind of general well-being at home. So if you're interested, just drop an email to T at owaves.com. And, and that's uh, where we're going with yeah. that. So eventually we'll add quite a few new features, but we're targeting students now, hoping that students can be healthier because that's kind of the, that's when your habits are formed quite early on. Mm -hmm. um, so if we target you now, you'll be healthier into your later ages. So I hope that you do these two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions. <laughs> I'll read the questions. Yeah. Sorry, I have a question. Can you start? Why does 6 a.m. start work? So that's, I think that's just the result. So we've got a UX designer who's a, he's a co-founder. Um, so he's, he's done his whole background in design. So I think that's probably just the centrum. Generally, 6 a.m. being when the, when the sun rises, he probably worked out the metrics on an average or just the other six. I think that you know how the clock is orientated. Yeah, but this is just for the podcast. I think it's just design. I didn't ask him about the, uh, the, the physiology stuff. But yeah, I'll feed that back actually because that's interesting. I don't know if that, that counterintuitive because the clock doesn't work like that, does it? But I think because he's, he's an expert designer, he had to see what the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just <laughs> that's just feedback. Like, this is not for the app. This is for the podcast. So just for IT. It's just IT. The percent of percent. I actually.
almost too much information can damage your ability to relax. So that's, that's a good question, yeah, because you always mm. switch on. So that's because I'm quite self quantified, so I wouldn't want to be arguing. So what I do is I don't crazily go on about, okay, what minute, how many mm. minutes did I get? But just broadly speaking, you know, okay, so heart rate variability is a good measure of kind of your stress load. Mm. So I know if it's going up, it's good. I can, you know, work a bit harder. Mm. If it's going down, I need to recover. Mm. Um, so I don't go into it that deeply. Mm. Um, in the future with AI systems, we won't even have to look at the data. We'll have prompts that will already be decided with the data. And, and we'll just be kind of passive consumers of that data. Um, and with regards to, yes, using devices. So now Apple has the blue light filter, which apparently still isn't as good as it should be. I use blue light blocking glasses yeah. uh, for about nine, so it helps yeah. filter. So, so I, I'll, I'll answer yeah. that. If I may, I, I, I think we're not going to get. We're, we're, yeah. This is not. We're not going to get away from this, right? Yeah. Devices are not going to go. Yeah. Technology is not yeah. going to stop yeah. advancing. So actually, I think this is what we should be harnessing technology for. So, um, you know, we're 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 in the age of tech. So let's use tech to make us more healthy, yeah. make us more aware of the choices that we're making. I think I think you're absolutely right. One of the problems is that we we mindlessly go through our day, yeah. not consciously aware of the choices that we're making and what impact that might have on our physical mm. and mental health. What you're providing here is the ability for someone to reflect and mindfully make choices yeah. when they're entering things into their diary yeah. around how is this adding to my mental and physical health and all my work productivity? And where is the balance here? You know, and we, we were sort of, you probably saw we were chatting to each other partly as you went through because we were sort of, you know, I, I often end to add things into my diary and I and after I've done it, I think, why? Why did yes. I add that in? Actually, what you're providing people with is the ability to harness technology yeah. to allow them to mindfully make better Choose. choices around yeah. their life or choose not to make those better exactly, choices. Yeah. It's their That's choice. fine. Um, so I, 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 I appreciate I said technology is one of the scourges of sleep, but that's because of the way in which technology has developed and we haven't really we've kind of almost learned to get away with this, haven't we? And actually what you're doing is kind of bringing it back and going, well, how can we use technology better then? Let's bring it back and make it work for us yeah. rather than us kind of being led by it. So I, exactly. I think so, it's fantastic. Because life is dynamic. So if you've missed exercise on one day or whatever, right. then you know, okay, you're working on a weekly basis almost, so I need to get a few, this many hours in a week. So you can be quite flexible really. Yeah. So when you're planning, like you said, if you plan something, you're like, why did I plan this? Because <laughs> you have no idea how much you've spent in that week yeah. you know, sleeping. So if you've planned kind of your, your week, Overall, you, you can see if you're hitting yeah. the healthy level. Yeah. Um, for example, exercise, the NICE recommends two hours and a half of moderate a week. Um, but sometimes it's very hard to do that regularly. Mm. If something comes up in life, because then you know, okay, I can compensate on another day. Mm. And this is where I can plan it in because I have a slot. Mm. And most people are already using Google Calendars and apps anyway for planning. So it's more of a kind of replacement for those apps where the emphasis is back on health and wellness mm. and rather than just kind of planning in a calendar. But um, yeah, hope we've got a few things coming which will hopefully make it a bit more fun. And you might not need to answer this one then. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because right. of the uh, IP. But you mentioned a, bit, a little bit around um, AI. Yeah. Are you going to be using machine learning, do you think, for this? Hopefully, yes. Yeah. This because that's, that's where this gets yeah. really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, uh, the more uses you get, the more yeah. powerful the machine learning yeah. becomes, and the more powerful exactly. the whole product becomes. It's the whole. Absolutely. So, so our CTO is actually machine learning and AI leader at Amazon. Uh -huh. so Amazing. Enjoyed, yeah. So um, right. that's yeah. something which, because I, I love AI, so I'm quite excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so with always my interest, obviously being a doctor in the UK, it's just I love lifestyle medicine, I love tech, and it was the perfect fusion. So yeah. I'm working as the head of innovation for them. So it's on, on the side of working with Juniper, so it keeps me kind of going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interested. <laughs> and just this lifestyle medicine thing, by the way, guys, is, is, is as you say, small now. I mean, when we were at we're friggin' old. But when we were at, I'm older than her. I don't know why I'm including her in this. I'm real. Um, but there was no, you know, lifestyle medicine wasn't a thing. And this idea now is, you say that you yeah. know, there are courses you can go yeah. on. Imperial and Mary and I have worked on incorporating some of this oh, into great. the curriculum for students themselves, but also with a focus on enabling students to therefore apply some of that to their patients. And this idea of behavioural modification is bonkers that we don't train physicians in how to no modify idea. their own behaviour and yeah. that of their patients because we spend the majority of our clinics trying to modify behaviour <laughs> and, and, and failing because mm. we don't really know the science of how to do it. But I would encourage you all to really start looking at lifestyle medicine as the future of medicine. Yeah. This is how it is going and it's a bit niche at the minute yeah. and there's people like you kind of talking about it which I think is really exciting and you mentioned some of the courses and some of the big names in that field. Um, but this is absolutely the, the direction that, that medicine is going to go in. There are 
streets ahead in the US, particularly know, in yeah. California. California is <laughs> um, the culture. But this is how yeah. it's going. So, you know, That's really, um, yeah. you know, if you want to be ahead of yourself, th this is this is absolutely where medicine's going. I'm glad I was an advocate because in hospitals yes. and therefore what? No one no, takes me I seriously. Know. No, no, but this is well. Because digital is emerging as well, so it's lifestyle. Indeed. So when you're part of both movements, it's like, it's I like crazy. I think that's really exciting. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, this first certification was in August, so I sat the exam in three. So I'm certified in lifestyle. Amazing. But um, yeah, so oh, I think. Oh, we to talk about which one you did. Well, <laughs> yeah, the BSLM one, one, the one from the, because America, the American College has licensed it for the international board. Okay. So the BSLM set up that. Okay. So August was the first setting. So a few public health consultants, a few GPs. Yeah, I saw. Doctors. Yeah. Because um, I was interested in this one before. I was like, let me just go. And yeah, see. yeah. Honestly, I really, guys, this is where you need to be going. Yeah. 70% chronic disease at the moment uh, in the population. This is, yeah. So. Yeah. And we don't get taught at medical school. So. No. It's really interesting as well, like from really a human performance perspective. You know, and this well. and this idea as well, I like really like the fact that you've got your social in there as well. This yeah. idea of kind of, yes. you know, yeah. It's on the podcast a lot of the because you get these kind of intelligent people and you think they want to talk about social, but their main thing is they do highlight how yeah. how important socializing is. Yeah. And uh, so, so listen to the podcast if you're interested. More yeah. Like this, yeah. But thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, you guys want to come down, have a chat, have a chat, that's great. Thank you very much for coming, it's been amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I was saying to my colleague that I've just sort of started looking at this, 